More torque than a Model S Plaid in ludicrous plus mode. 0 to 50 in 6 seconds. And it can carry no less than 10 tons of rubbish. Today we're talking bin lorries and we're here at Lunas in Silverstone where they're giving thousands of dirty old refuse trucks the ultimate electric makeover. Like fully charged? Then you'll love our fun-packed Everything Electric Expos around the world. Next up, we're in London and Harrogate. Remember, energy and transport professionals go free on the first day. This is about lowering emissions one vehicle at a time. Imagine if you have a fleet and you have 500 vehicles within your fleet. If you choose to transition them to new EV alternatives, naturally those 500 vehicles end up in other locations and they will produce emissions from a further life extension. Now the key here is that when a vehicle comes into Luna as we decommission the engine, you are lowering the emissions one vehicle at a time. Now these refuse trucks start off life as internal combustion Mercedes Euro Econic 6 vans and they come in here, get an electric makeover and get transformed into these upcycled electric trucks. Now these ones here, they have four to six 65.5 kilowatt hour batteries, each weighing 570 kilos. They're actually provided by a cell manufacturer here in the UK and assembled here. Now the design is really specific and designed such that you can maximize the amount of space for collecting rubbish. Now the reason that it's between four to six packs is because the range that you need is absolutely dependent on the different local authority and the different routes. Some areas are much more congested than others, some are hillier than others. So Lunas can work with local authorities or waste management companies to understand how much range they actually need. Um, but the top range is around 150 to 160 miles. Now whilst these do add 570 kilos per battery pack, increasing the overall weight of the vehicle, thanks to a special dispensation from the Department for Transport, this is still able to carry 10 tonnes of rubbish. Now the thing that is really interesting here is that this is powerful. It packs a punch. In fact, it has 6,800 newton meters of torque, 343 kilowatts of power, perhaps in large part thanks to the number of ex-Formula One engineers that there are here at Lunas. But what that means is that this is genuinely a legitimate vehicle that you could use in a car chase, even if laden with 10 tons of rubbish. So when we arrived today, I did ask one of your colleagues if I could drive. And they said, of course, if you've got a HGV license, which sadly I do not possess. So I can't make any comments about how it feels to drive, but I will say as a passenger, it certainly doesn't feel like a 26 ton vehicle. How does it feel? It's really smooth and, and you know, there's not much effort required to, to drive it. We put a, a driver calibration on it. Now some of that is because we don't want to give people a vehicle at 26 tonnes that would do 0 to 50 in 6 seconds, it wouldn't be wise. But also because we've got to try and conserve energy. So we've put a driver calibration onto this vehicle that means that it drives exactly the same fully loaded as it does if it's empty. Uh, you know, it, there's no difference, it drives the same. Oh my goodness, so whether it's, it's fully loaded with 10 tonnes of rubbish or whether it's completely empty, it will feel ostensibly the same Exactly to the, the same. So rather than being a traditional vehicle builder where you build the vehicle to a specification for multiple uses, we've looked at the end user whether it be a council or whether it be one of the large fleet operators in the waste management sector, and ask what do they require from a vehicle? What are their problems with the vehicle? You know, information like rats chew through the loom from the chassis to the body. Like these are areas that, as a refuse truck with a body on the back which is predominantly for refuse, these are the issues they face. How can we tackle these issues when we completely re-engineer this vehicle? And I think that's where you get a premium vehicle at the backside. This is not a like-for-like -like equivalent of what the used vehicle was. This is also not a new vehicle. This is what I would call a better than new vehicle. If you think about it, these spaces are ostensibly people's offices. It is their place of work and it should be a nice place to be. And so there are all sorts of things that the Lunas engineers wanted to include, which they found out when they went and sat in on bin rounds and really sort of understood what are some of the pains that, that people were having to go through. Now, one of the things that they mentioned was that 
there were only two cup holders, which seems totally illogical. If you've got four people in the front, you need at least four cup holders. And Lunas have gone one better. They've actually got five. Now, one of the other things that they mentioned was that this panelling used to be very dark and that meant that the cabin felt very dark. So they changed the colours, made it feel much lighter and brighter. And one of the things that's extremely tempting about this panel here is putting your feet up on it. So if you're going to put your feet up on it, why not coat it with a material that can withstand a little bit more wear and tear? And in fact, they've coated this with the same material that you see on aeroplanes. They've also got two screens here. So one is for Apple CarPlay. So the people sat here, they can control the music, the sat nav or what have you. And this one here is for cameras. And there are cameras which just seem to make absolute sense. And it's almost, you know, ridiculous to think that they didn't exist there before, such as a 360 degree camera. So you can see the whole way around the vehicle. You can see where the bins are. You can see where people and pedestrians are. Um, and obviously that is so important when you've got this thundering great big truck that has to go down super teeny tiny narrow roads. They're able to have that very clear view, which is going to make the whole experience that much safer. So when Lunaz sat with various different teams, apparently there used to be so much debate about this middle seat and who would get the middle seat. Um, and that's because it was way more comfortable than the other ones. So they spent a lot of time thinking about how to make this much more comfortable to sit in and these seats are definitely an upgrade from their predecessors, way more comfortable. And partly because they have heated seats as well and a heated steering wheel, which I have to say, you know, today it is like naught degrees C, we've been getting in and out of the vehicle. and I've been incredibly grateful to have that heated seat. Just watch your step. It's very nice having the full height door. I don't yeah. need to duck. No, I can step up in style. You're okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're going to show me how to do one. Yep. I'll show you the first one, then you can do the next one. Fab. So right. Grab your bin as you normally would. Got a bin. I'm going to watch carefully on the buttons. Right, drive it up, make sure it's onto the points at the back. And you press this blue up button. and then the back want to bring it down. Blue for up, dark blue for down. Yep. Got it. Okay. Perfect. You got that one. I could not give you a good reason why, but I have always wanted to do this. <laughs> right. Look it up. How do I know it's aligned? Just as far forward as it can be. That's okay. it. And then you just press the other button. Got a good amount of momentum on that one. <sighs> Back on and on to the next one. There you go. Ten more hours. <laughs> <laughs> 1,587 to go. <laughs> when it comes to upcycling and retrofits, I kind of get it from a, you know, bespoke vehicle perspective because it's, it's almost like coach building. But when you scale that up to make it work for thousands of vehicles per year, that's where my mind begins to boggle. So how on earth have you made that possible? You do think about other industries. This is really common practice in aviation, marine. It's only automotive that no one's ever tested that formula, whether you can upcycle a product that exists. So if you look at those industries, you can see examples where this is already taking place around the globe. So as you can see with Silverstone, we've built this factory to service 1,600 vehicles a year, but we're taking another facility, which is purely on the like upcycling aspect of the business, where it's strip re-blast. And it's really key that you do this at scale. Otherwise, there's zero impact. You know, when you look at the operators around the globe and the requirement they have for this transition, you have to scale with the demand that is there. And it's key as we pioneer within this industry in the automotive aspect of upcycling that others follow within this space because this has to happen within this transition of these two billion vehicles. Lunas have been busy perfecting the system that's needed to make sure that this can really scale. And here, in this 250,000 square foot facility, they can make 1,100 upcycled electric trucks per year. And the reason they can is because the process is pretty straightforward, really. It's an 11 tact process, which means there's 11 really key steps in the dance. And step one, a vehicle comes in, the 7.7 .7 litres inline six cylinder diesel engine gets removed, decommissioned and recycled. 
then you have some mechanical assembly, then some sub-assemblies go in, like your cooling system, your auxiliary systems, your powertrain. Then we have the battery cradle and the rear carrier. Then you have your HVDPU, your high voltage power distribution unit. And finally, your ETPO, your electric power takeoff, which is the thing that runs the hydraulic system such that it can lift the bins. And then the final step in the dance, when the interior and cabin are all brought together to make this a really, really beautiful rubbish truck. Since this film was recorded, the Lunas Group has announced it will restructure in order to rescope timelines for commercial vehicle production. This aligns with challenging market dynamics due to anticipated and confirmed shifts in the ban on ICE commercial vehicles in the UK. However, Lunas still plans to produce these vehicles at a later date when market and policy conditions can better drive demand. So if you buy an upcycled electric vehicle, clearly you're already saving carbon at the tailpipe but you're also saving a tremendous amount of embedded carbon. And if you take a vehicle like the Mercedes Euroconic 6, it's designed to last a million miles and yet might only be used for 70,000 to 90,000. And so coming here and upcycling it, it means that Lunas can save up to 80% of the embedded carbon. And a factory like this will save the equivalent weight in carbon as the Eiffel Tower each year. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to answer this question, but I think given the, the sheer speed in which you've scaled here, um, I imagine that there are other vehicles up your sleeve. What's next? Yeah, well, we've hidden a few today. And, uh, you know, right now we are focused on servicing the waste management sector. And obviously the Mercedes Econic, uh, which is one of the platforms that we've started on, has multiple uses and applications. But we are really focused on getting the, we would say, the package correct, the aftercare correct, to really service something that we all need. Waste is a key, key factor within all of our lives. And obviously there are so many different vehicle classes that this is a correct application for. I mean, just go to an airport and look at half of those ground support equipment. You know, these are obvious candidates within this business, but uh, you'll see a lot coming out of Lunas over the next few years. For local authorities, going electric is a major part of net zero plans and finding the way to do it in the most straightforward and cost effective way possible is absolutely vital. But going electric isn't a like for like swap, no, with the right people doing it, it can be the ultimate electric makeover, the ultimate upgrade. So rubbish trucks by name, most certainly not by nature. <laughs>